Before we begin this week's edition of ASEAN Highlight, our news team would like to express our deepest condolences to the people of Japan and those who have suffered from the tragedy that has occurred in that country. In this week's edition, we review and examine the impact the Japanese earthquake and tsunami has on the ASEAN region. The 9.0 magnitude earthquake and the tsunami that hit the Japanese northeastern Tohoku region last Friday was one of the worst natural calamities ever hit the East Asian island nation. A week on, the degree of the devastation cannot yet be fully determined as numerous aftershocks continue to hit the country, while the weather condition and the infrastructural damages have hampered rescue efforts. As the snow continued to fall, lowering the temperature in the quake-hit area, some 850,000 households lack electricity and more than 1.5 million households lack running water. Furthermore, according to the official data cited by Kyoto News, there are currently over 16,000 people unaccounted for, of which more than 6,000 are dead and over 10,000 are still missing. By the end of this week, some have estimated that the death toll could rise to more than 10,000 people. At the moment, over 400,000 people have been evacuated and there are residing in some 2,000 temporary shelters scattered across the eight prefectures in that region. More are threatened to become displaced as the March 11 quake and the ensuing tsunami and aftershocks have triggered a possibility of nuclear meltdown in reactors of several nuclear power plants in the northeastern area of Honshu Island. The number four reactor was on fire Large explosions occurred at the Fukushima nuclear power plant, causing leakage of radiation this week, prompting authorities to evacuate people in the adjacent areas as the radiation levels surge. Many countries around the world also urged their citizens near the area to evacuate, fearing the escalation of radiation leakage. While the Japanese authority has insisted that a full-scale Chernobyl-style meltdown can yet be averted, the situation and the rumor of its escalation spark panics as well as debates around the world about the security of nuclear power facilities. In Asia, the nuclear fear have impacted various regional stock markets as well as created even more volatility on the prices of commodities in the world market, which has already been affected by the crisis and the possible war in Libya and the civil unrest in the Middle East. Furthermore, the crisis has also created volatility in the global currency market as the price of the Japanese yen against the US dollars rose due to the speculation that Japanese firms will sell their assets abroad to raise capital for the real building back home, a development that could further derail the global economic recovery. Meanwhile, in China, the specter of a regional nuclear fallout have caused the hoarding of salt across the country as many consumers believe that salt with iodine can help protect people from nuclear radiation. While in the Philippines, many have been worried by the hoax text messages telling people that radiation leakage in Japan could reach the Southeast Asian archipelago island, a prospect dismissed by the Filipino authority as scientifically improbable. Beyond the reactionary panic, the Japanese tragedy has made many countries to rethink their nuclear power programs and nuclear power safety regulation. The crisis in Fukushima have caused countries like Poland and Austria to request the reviews of nuclear safety standards in Europe, prompting the EU countries to agree in performing stress tests of 153 reactors situated in Europe. While Switzerland and China have both suspended their nuclear projects pending on new safety evaluation and changes to safety regulation. Germany, meanwhile, announced the immediate shutdown of seven of its plants for three months. In Southeast Asia, where no countries have yet to operate any nuclear power plants, but many have planned for it in the future, the Japanese experience has produced mixed reactions. In Thailand, where there is planned to build five nuclear reactors by 2020 to 2025, the Japanese crisis sparked a public debate that prompted Thai Prime Minister Pisidwe Chashiwa to order a review of its nuclear power plan. Meanwhile, Malaysia's plan to build a 2 gigawatt nuclear power station by 2021 will also likely be reviewed. Contrary to the prevailing trend, Vietnam, which has planned to build eight nuclear facilities by 2030, still insisted on completing their plan, 
while Indonesia also vows to go ahead with its plan to build nuclear plants with four nuclear reactors on Bangka Island off the coast of Sumatra by 2025. This morning, the footage is taken this The prospect of the escalation of radiation leakage made many ASEAN governments to prepare evacuation plans for their citizens. There are over 42,000 Thais residing in Japan and 5,500 of which live near the vicinity of the damaged Fukushima power station. Meanwhile, 4,500 Filipinos out of the 360,000 who live in Japan live in the potential danger zone. The Indonesian government also vows to help their citizens living in Iwaki in Miyaki prefectures. It is estimated 400 out of 31,517 Indonesians who live in Japan reside in the quake-hit area. At the same time, the Singapore embassy in Tokyo has been assisting about 3,000 Singaporeans who reside in Japan to depart or stay out of harm's way. The Malaysian government, meanwhile, said that the current radiation levels in Tokyo and its surrounding areas do not warrant an immediate evacuation of over 5,000 Malaysians living there. Despite this, Putrajaya assured their citizens that it has evacuation contingency plan prepared in case the situation worsened. In light of this crisis, Dr. Surin Pitsuwan, the Secretary-General of ASEAN, aptly stated that when our dialogue partners suffer, ASEAN suffers along with them, we are a community. Member countries of the association have extended their assistance to Japan in various ways. Cambodia and Lao PDR this week has provided $100,000 to relieve the victims. The Laos government also set up a national committee to raise more funds and is ready to dispatch personnel. Meanwhile, the Indonesian has dispatched 64 trained quick response team equipped with medical equipments. The team includes the Indonesian Armed Forces search and rescue personnel. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council of the Philippines is also ready to deploy its search and rescue contingent, while the Singapore Civil Defense Force Operation Lionheart contingent has been activated and ready for deployment in the quake hit areas of Japan. Meanwhile, Vietnam has provided 200,000 US dollars in assistance and put its medical team on standby, ready to be deployed upon request from the Japanese government. The world's largest rice exporter, Thailand, has approved the sending of 15,000 tons of rice to Japan, while Abyssin's cabinet have also agreed to provide the Japanese government with over 6.5 million US dollars in assistance. Apart from all the physical aid, many in ASEAN have expressed their deepest condolences and voiced moral support to the government and the people of Japan in this difficult time. And that's it for this edition of ASEAN Highlight this week. On behalf of the ASEAN News Desk here, I wish you all have a lovely weekend and swati krab.